Hi guys, today's topic is optimum break force distribution and this is part 1 video. As usual, I have a quiz for you. The which of the following statement is right? Number 1. The break stopping distance with EBD can get shorter at the same pedal force compared to the brake system without EBD. Number two, the brake stopping distance with EBD cannot get shorter at the same brake pedal force compared to the brake system without EBD. Which one is right? You know that? Let's review previous video briefly. Wow, this looks complicated, but I prepared an easy explanation. When we apply the braking force, weight transfer happens to the front, like this. Therefore, a front vertical force gets heavier, gets heavier, and the rear vertical force gets lighter, like this. A brake force is the horizontal horizontal force proportional to the vertical reaction force. The proportional constant uh, is, is the tire friction coefficient mu here. You can remember. Uh, the role of rear brake is very important for vehicle stability. A rear brake force should always not only keep its quantity, not to provoke a wheel locking, but also keep its maximum quantity just below the force level, causing the rear wheel locked up. Uh, that is the way to use the uh, brake system with the maximum efficiency. Here we have an optimum brake force distribution curve here. A vertical axis uh, represents uh, the normalized braking force of rear wheel FNR. The horizontal axis represents the normalized braking force of front wheel FNF. Here, the normalized braking force uh, means its value is dimensionless. If we have a brake force divided by a vehicle weight, we can make it dimensionless. Uh, those two normalized forces are obtained by the corresponding brake force uh, divided by the uh, vehicle weight mg. The reason why uh, normalized forces are used uh, in the brake design curve is that uh, we can design uh, the optimum brake force distribution curve without consideration of vehicle weight. I will show you I will show you that in the braking force distribution part 2 video. In this slide, I will explain how to read the optimum brake force distribution curve. A black curve describes the optimum brake force distribution here in which uh, the friction coefficient are all the same at all wheels. The red lines with 45 degrees counterclockwise uh, show the constant deceleration on which every point has the same deceleration value. Uh, for example, on the line of 0.6g, every point has the same deceleration 0.6g. Every point on this line here has the same deceleration value 0.6g. Uh, therefore, a line A to F represents 0.6g constant deceleration. A line B to E represents 0.5g constant deceleration. A line C to D represents 0.4g constant deceleration. 
And uh, also, uh, what the point ABC here, ABC, I uh, mean is that uh, the rear brakes takes charge of all the brake forces uh, when front brakes fail. Uh, likewise, all the point all the points of D, D, E, F mean is that the front brakes takes charge of all the brake forces when the rear brake fails. Of course, a G is the gravitational acceleration. That is equal to 9.8 meter per sec square. In this slide, I will explain proportioning valve. In this picture, a black curve, black curve uh, represents optimum brake force distribution, and the red lines here uh, represent the uh, constant deceleration lines. The blue line here. is the characteristic curve of proportioning belt uh, which is employed uh, to prevent the rear wheel wheel locking uh, normally it has two straight lines like this and has safety gap uh, from the optimum brake force distribution curve of course there is proportioning valve with three straight lines the green area here uh, shows the uh, lost rear brake forces because of a proportioning valve. Proportioning valve can help the uh, vehicle avoid uh, wheel locking uh, but leave the uh, drawback of green area to be removed for the uh, brake efficiency. Proportioning valve uh, was widely used before EBD. When we use the proportioning belt, the rear brake forces are always lower than the optimum brake distribution curve. Therefore, we end up with the problems of a small braking force at the rear wheels, which are unduly onerous burden on the front, front wheels, requiring higher brake pedal pressure at the given deceleration. Accelerating a front tire and the brake pad wear compared with the rear ones. A need for a bigger brake system in the front wheels compared with a rear ones. What is the solution? The answer is EBD. What is EBD? EBD stands for electronic brake force distribution. A yellow curve here it looks like seesaw shape describes the brake force distribution lines employed by EBD. EBD uh, makes the brake system to use the maximum rear wheel forces to the full uh, which is more than that described by the optimum brake force distribution curve. Uh, let's look into the EBD operation principle. EBD continuously measures the ratio of rear to front wheel slip. Uh, let's call that a ratio as R sub S. Uh, let's look at the point A. In the braking, a brake force is increasing to the point A. Here we have a, a red dot. Uh, when R sub S gets bigger than a predefined value, EBD crosses the corresponding rear brake valve not to raise that rear brake force further. And then uh, let's look at uh, point B. Uh, when the driver increases, increases the force 
on the brake pedal, the status uh, move to the blue dot here. And the front brake slip increases, EBD open the corresponding belt to raise that rear brake force further. And then uh, let's look at the point C. Again, uh, when R sub S gets bigger than the predefined value, the status uh, move to the green dot. Then EBD uh, closes the corresponding uh, rear brake bell not to raise that rear brake force further. EBD repeats the steps above many times. In this way, EBD helps the vehicle uh, use maximum rear brake forces. You can find the same explanation in this reference book here. If we have the EBD system, we have a lot of advantages. Uh, there is no need for proportioning bell. A difference of wear between the front and the rear one can be significantly reduced for tire and brake pad. EBD uh, keeps brake efficiency for a whole of vehicle lifetime. EBD provides optimum handling stability for all driving condition, including uphill, downhill, cornering, and any kinds of payload, and finally, any kinds of powertrain status. A stopping distance with EBD can be shorter at the same pedal force. Small additional cost is enough for EBD installation on your existing ABS. A front brake size can be reduced. Uh, let's find the answer to the quiz. Uh, in the picture, a red dot here is any single point of EBD curve, and the blue dot here is any single point of proportioning a valve curve. Among A, B, C, and D, uh, the longest length requires uh, the biggest brake pedal force. The constant deceleration line has a slope of 45 counterclockwise, as you can see, and any single point of optimum curve has bigger force in the front than in the uh, rear because of weight transfer. Uh, moreover, any single point of proportioning valve curve has bigger force in the front uh, than that of optimum curve does. Uh, therefore, the answer is number one. Uh, the brake stopping distance with EBD can get shorter at the same pedal force compared to the brake system without EBD. Uh, here we have the conclusion in this video. Uh, tire friction coefficients is all the same. At all wheels in the optimum brake distribution curve. EBD uh, provides uh, lots of advantages uh, for the brake efficiency, uh, vehicle stability, tire wear, brake pad wear, and optimized performance at any driving condition uh, for vehicle lifetime. The brake stopping distance with EBD uh, can get shorter at the same pedal force compared to the brake system without EBD. Equipped with EBD, the front brake size can be reduced. Uh, you can watch my uh, previous videos uh, if you have anything difficult to understand in this video. I explained principle of a weight transfer in the previous video. And also, I explained why the braking force uh, tends to provoke the yawing motion. I took the practical example you can probably meet in your driving. 
And recently, I explained uh, the longitudinal slip, uh, which is the crucial factor of ABS and EBD. Uh, let me introduce uh, the next video coming soon. It's about how to make optimum break force distribution curve equations. Practical example with Excel and the relationship with the vehicle center of gravity. See you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.